So mom and dad were cruisers. Dad was career Navy and we're always around the water, but my parents were of moderate means, so we weren't really a boating family. So it was kind of out of the blue when my dad summarily announced that he and my mom were gonna sail around the world together when he got rid of us kids. My dad retired and my parents made their cruising dreams a reality. So they walked the docks for months and months and read every broker drag and eventually settled on a stout 49 foot catch called a Transpac built by a little yard in Taiwan called Tashing. And they lived aboard for a couple of years and eventually they left. They took off and cruised through the Pacific Northwest and then the two of them left and they crossed the Pacific. And I had a standing invitation to come with them and when they got to New Zealand, I jumped. I sold all my stuff and had a couple of surfboards shaped and I met them in New Zealand. And that first big passage to Tonga, it changed me in a way that happens to some people hundreds of miles offshore when you become a tiny speck on a big ocean. And early on in the journey, I figured something out. I knew something unlike anything I'd ever known before because I was a kid, I'm, you know, I'm 20 years old, I'm traveling around and I knew that I would be a captain and that I would have a boat and I would do this. And so we're in a remote corner of Vanuatu and we're buddy boating with this Aussie couple and Reese and Nola. And Reese is a classic Aussie. The guy's like a cartoon. Anyway, at this beautiful 49 foot sloop called the Taswell. And it was built by a little yard in Taiwan called Tashing. And he gave me a tour of his boat. It was so clean and so beautiful. And we were talking about sailing and you know some of the challenges with it and weather and whatnot. And he uh, reached into a cabinet, pulled out a Polaroid picture. The Polaroid picture was nothing but a hull, but it was this big canoe shape and it had this bulbous bow on it. It looked like a ship. And I said, uh, well, what's that? And he said, that, it's a Nordhaven. And I said, yeah, well, what's that? And he goes, ah, oh, mate, single engine trawler. She's got stabilizers, air conditioning, heaps of diesel, heaps of diesel. Straight over the horizon in the watery whop whop. And I wasn't sure everything he said, but what I heard him say was flat decks, air conditioning because it's hot in the tropics and to do things that we couldn't ordinarily do. You know, fishing, you know, spinning on a fish in the open ocean takes a while on a sailboat. And I also heard that, uh, that going out onto slippery decks in the middle of the night to shorten sail with my mom was ever gonna happen again. That picture and that vision, man, it's stuck in my head like a splinter, like a song that you hear right before you go on a dive, you're not getting rid of it. So about six months later, we're in Guam. Uh, my parents pushed the pause button and I was kind of at a crossroads and uh, borrowed some money and came back to Southern California and I was, I was broke and suntan. And then I met this girl and I told her what I had in mind and she didn't run away. And she harnessed the lightning that sometimes shoots from my fingers and screws things up. He told me the night that we met that eventually he would live on a boat. And if I didn't think I could do that, that we shouldn't even date. My dad lived on a boat. I had spent a lot of time on boats as a, as a kid. So one of the amazing things about John is that he's not just a dreamer. He's a human doing, not a human being. And the dream that he described to me on the night that we met um, wasn't just a fairy tale. It was something that he set about his life to create. We started from nothing and we built it from the ground up. He has these lofty visions, these dreams, these manifestations, and, and then together we work to, to make them a reality. We talked about cruising all the way along. It was always gonna be a Nordhaven. And when Erin came in and showed me a report, like she's done a thousand times, because she's the brains of the operation, that we'd be able to build Dragon and then it would be the best option. I was a dock walker and I was a boat show stalker. And then suddenly I'm sitting in the conference room at headquarters across from Jim and Dan and Eric and Justin, my project manager, and signing a contract, cut one of the biggest checks of my life. They gave me some t-shirts and a couple of stickers and hats maybe. <laughs> For the time that followed, um, thousands of emails. You know, I had some pretty outrageous ideas and, and Eric and, Justin would have to break out the crayons and explain to me why we couldn't do something a certain way or why something wasn't gonna work. And so the world was covered in COVID and I didn't get to see that little boatyard in Taiwan. 
And then Dragon arrived one day in Ensenada on the deck of a rusty ship. And suddenly I was climbing a Jacob's ladder onto the deck. And I was the first one through the door. Eric handed me the keys. And I wasn't prepared for the emotional reaction. I walk in and the boat's dark and I'm tearing paper off the window and light streaming in from the outside. And I'm seeing the boat for the very first time. And I'm fighting back tears and I keep telling myself it's just a thing. It's just a thing. When is a thing not a thing? When it's woven into the fabric of your life, when it's become a fuel in your fire? Maybe this ring on my finger is just a scratched up piece of metal, or maybe the day my son was born was just a Friday. Not to me. You know, life is episodic. A chapter to be a kid, and a chapter to figure out your path, a chapter to do and build. And this chapter, I wrote it in my head a long, long time ago, and it hasn't happened like I imagined it at all. And I'm really, really glad, because I'd have sold myself way short. You know, the world spins so fast. I'm just trying to create gravity for the people I love. I think it's a good way to do it. It's working out pretty well so far. I mean, Dragon hasn't been in my family for a year yet. You know, the realization of goals and dreams, it just gives fuel and gives rise to greater goals and greater dreams. I've been shown that what you water grows. I'm just starting to dream about where we're gonna go and what we're gonna do. I'm not dreaming small, not this time. <laughs>